afternoon, Mr. Lionel. Good afternoon. Mr. Lionel, on behalf of the defendants, um, Mr. Lionel, first, I'd like to say on behalf of uh, my clients and all of my uh, colleagues, I want to express my deepest condolences to uh, you and your family. Thank you. Um, Mr. Lionel, I'd like to uh, touch briefly um, on your, uh, your education and your training. Um, we talked uh, with Mr. Kelly about your CV, which is crowded in 99. You know, we don't really need to look at it, but um, in terms of your uh, college education, you were an administration of justice major, right? Yes. And that involved primarily criminal justice coursework, correct? Criminal justice and social work, yes. Okay. Uh, that did not involve any uh, computer science or information systems coursework, right? That's correct. Uh, your CV says that you've had 600 hours of training. Um, however, uh, is it true you haven't had any training or coursework uh, over the past two years? Whatever my last date is, uh, I would look, look at it. 2012. Yes, I've been two years. Then. Um, do you agree with me that um, in this rapidly evolving technological age, it's important to stay at speed with technology, wouldn't you? I think the software that I use keeps up the speed. Uh, in terms of your prior testifying experience, Mr. Lino, um, you've only been qualified as an expert to testify in court, personally in court, on one occasion since you left the uh, Pennsylvania State Police, right? That's correct. That was a child pornography case that was carried over from your police work, isn't that right? It was a federal law and jury, yes. It was a child pornography case, right? That's correct. And as far as civil matters go, um, there's only one occasion, I think you, you mentioned it, where your deposition testimony was used, that's right? That's correct. And your qualifications were not challenged in that case, right? I think, I think there, was a, there, there was a challenge or questions by, by the opposing attorney on what you do with that book. And so, uh, I, I, I think I can disagree on I mean, that. I think if I wasn't going to be qualified as an expert, then the death would have never occurred. Um, just want to remember uh, back in early June, you and I sat down for a deposition and I asked you some questions. You gave me some answers. Remember yeah, that? I do. Um, and I asked you the question, uh, oh, I see, you gave your video death. You didn't testify at trial, but your testimony was used at trial. And you said, answer, that's correct. And then what challenge your qualifications in that matter? Answer, that's correct. <laughs> uh, Mr. Lano, you would agree with me that it's important for a computer forensic expert to only make assumptions that are supported by forensic evidence, correct? I would have no assumptions. No persistent conclusions that are supported by forensic evidence, yes. So it's okay to make inferences, but not assumptions? I, I, I don't know what your definition of assumption is. Uh, the, the information that occurred is something that occurred. Uh, we might be classified as an assumption that it occurred. Well, I'm just asking you, uh, do you think it's okay to make uh, inferences uh, in, in, in the course of present uh, testing? I think that everything that, that, that you say must be supported if, it, if it's involving computer forensics or computers, yes. And would you agree that uh, failing to do so and with the credibility of a life, reliability of a forensic report? I'm sure it would. Now, let's talk uh, a little bit about uh, the sergeant engagement and uh, sort of the information gathering process. Now, Swano, uh, you'd agree with me, right, that when you started working on the sergeant engagement, you had an understanding that certain former sergeant employees had taken files and proprietary information with them, right? Yes. And that understanding was communicated to you by someone at sergeant, correct? Yes. However, no one at sergeant told you the basis for the accusation that sergeant information was taken, correct? I don't know what the basis would have been, that's correct. No one communicated the basis. Which basis are you referring to? The basis for the understanding that sergeant, former sergeant employees have taken inf sergeant's information. 
so I don't understand it, but what case you're talking about. Uh, if that information is related to the fact that the state was engaged in, uh, that they were born in the late 30s and information missing, but the underlying dates, if you tell me what the underlying dates is, then I don't know what the answer is. When at your deposition, I asked you the following question, and you gave me the following answer. Question. No one from Sire told you the basis for the assumption that devices or information was taken. Answer. I'm not aware of the basis for this. I'm not aware of the background for this. And that's what I just answered to you. Uh, you, you asked me if anybody showed you, you know, the basis, and, and I said, what basis? Okay. Well, I think I'm satisfied with your testimony on that point, sir. Um, <coughs> Now, do you issue a report with findings about uh, Sergeant Computer Systems with former employees James Voss, Thomas Frame, Jim Simmons, Jeff Schumann, Kit Cabella, Jim Mannis, and Paul Schumann, right? I'm trying to follow you there, sir. I, I can slow down if you'd like. If, if you're going to ask me all those names at once, please. please. James Voss? Yes. Thomas Frame? Yes. Jim Simmons? Yes. Two for Jim Simmons. A laptop and a desktop. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, Jeff Schumann? Yes. Kit Cabella? Yes. Jim Mannis? Yes. And Paul Schumann? That's correct. And you didn't analyze any other Sergeant computer systems, right? That's correct. Your engagement included the analysis of devices for <coughs> evidence of the copy and deletion of proprietary information of Sergeant, correct? Yes. However, you don't know what constitutes sergeant proprietary information, do you? I do not. You can't distinguish between sergeant proprietary information and personal information, can you? That's correct. You don't have any personal knowledge that the former sergeant employees referenced in your report took any sergeant information, right? Is that right, Mr. Lana? Repeat that question. You don't have any personal knowledge that the former sergeant employees referenced in your report took any sergeant information, correct? Personal information, no. You don't have any personal information? No. Thank you. You were not asked to investigate the solicitation of sergeant employees, right? The solicitation of employee by the company is what you're referring to. That is what you're referring to. No. And you don't have any findings or opinions with regard to the solicitation of Sergeant employees, correct? That is correct. Now, with regard to these so called missing USB devices, Mr. Lino, you didn't personally conduct a search for any of these devices, did you? I did not. You relied on people at Sergeant to provide you with whatever devices they had, right? I relied on Sergeant to give me the devices to for analysis, correct? And we'll get into your report a little bit, but I guess I suppose we can turn to it now. It'd be a good time. Um, we'll turn to trial exhibit 101, page 5. And going on to page six. Are you with me? I'm with you. Yarn, let me know when you're at the one one. On this page, um, Lino appears to reference uh, the title of processing. The number of items, one through fifteen, on page five six. See that? I do. And uh, these are the only devices that you analyzed from Sergeant, right? That is correct. And you uh, received these devices at various times between February 26th and April 7th, right? Yes, I did. And you had completed your analysis uh, until sometime after April 7th, right? I feel I probably still haven't completed the analysis. It's still ongoing. Mr. Lionel, you don't know what efforts Sergeant undertook 
to locate missing USB devices, do you? I know what I was told. This one, you, you just made an assumption in the course of your analysis that Sergeant would provide you with all the relevant devices, isn't that right? There was no way in the report that I was going to start to provide you with all the relevant devices. So it's not your conclusion, your finding, you have all the relevant devices. You can't come to that conclusion. I have all, all of the devices that the Sergeant provided me. But you made the assumption that they provided you with all the devices that they have, right? So there is no assumption in the report that indicates that Sergeant made all the other devices that they had. Ms. Wyatt, your deposition? What? Uh, I uh, had the courtesy of knowing what page you read. Sure. I'm sorry. I apologize. All right. Page 111. Starting on line 7, the question begins. We talked a little bit about this, but I want to follow up. What do you know about the efforts that Sergeant undertook to locate any of the devices that are referenced on page 3 and continue on page 4? I was referring to a different chart at the time. Answer. Personal efforts by them? I do not know. Question. Would you typically, did you ask? Did I ask specifically that they look for these devices? No. Question. Is that typical to not ask about the efforts that were undertaken to search for devices like this? Answer. I believe so. It was my assumption that I had worked with a sergeant and they provided me devices and they would provide me with all the devices. I have no information or any indication otherwise. Well, Mr. Lyman, you don't have any forensic evidence to demonstrate that Sergeant provided you with all of the relevant USB devices in his possession, do you? So I don't think there would be any forensic evidence that would be the same. Well, you don't have any basis to conclude that um, some of these so-called missing devices still aren't in Sergeant's possession, do you? So if you have some forensic evidence, what what computer system am I looking at you find that forensic evidence? Do you have any basis to conclude that the so-called missing devices are still in Sergeant's possession? I would I would think that I was uh, uh, retained by this client and the client gave me the devices for analysis. Uh, whether there are more items there that they have. I can't say that I would like to think that I would. You would like to think so, but you can't say that for certain, right? So I don't think anyone can say that. Fair enough. Mr. Leno, let me ask you this. You didn't analyze all of the sergeant computers in the East Chicago office to determine if any of the so-called missing devices are still being connected to those computers, did you? In terms of the computers that you did analyze, uh, you relied on the sergeant personnel to identify those as devices used by former sergeant employees, right? With your question and the word device means computer? Computer. Yes, I relied on sergeant to uh, tell me that, uh, which laptop and which desktop uh, internal hard drive belong to. I believe your testimony earlier was that there were usernames contained within the laptop. Um, you don't know how those usernames got there, do you? Somebody put the usernames in. You don't know who, right? That is correct. Now you also don't know that the former sergeant employees were the actual users of the computers that are attributed to them in your report, right? 
um, in the executive summary section on Exhibit 100, second paragraph, the last sentence. And you referred, you made the observation here um, that this one terabyte by hard drive, it actually, it actually refers here to two uh, WD Passport one terabyte hard drives in size that are approximately 2,000 pickup truckloads of printed paper. See that? I do. You made that observation in your original report? I do. One of those was the uh, one terabyte hard drive that belongs in Sergeant IT department, right? That was correct. Now, when you make that observation, you made a similar um, you know, observation in reference to a different hard drive, we'll get to that in a moment. Um, when you're saying that a, a one terabyte hard drive could contain 1,000 pickup truckloads full of paper, you're assuming that that hard drive is completely full, right? So, you know, when you made the observation with respect to, like, let's let's take a step back and try to remember the part of your testimony where you mentioned 250 pickup truckloads of paper. Remember that? I do. So that was in reference to a uh, 250 gigabyte hard drive that Mr. Frame returned starting, right? Yes, of course. Um, so there, that reference to 250 pickup truck loads, that's suggesting that it was full, right? That is correct. And you actually analyzed that device because it was returned, right? We did. And there are no findings in your report about the uh, amount of data on that, that device that was returned, correct? Now, with respect to this uh, big one terabyte external hard drive that belongs to the Sergeant IT department, this came to light at one of the uh, depositions of the case, right? That was my understanding. And Mr. Schaefer told you about it, right? I know it was However, you didn't bother to ask Mr. Schaefer why the Sergeant IT Department didn't previously identify that device as their own, right? I do not. You also didn't ask the Sergeant IT Department if any of the other supposedly missing devices belong to the IT Department, did you? Topic of the uh, 250 gigabyte hard drive that Mr. Frame uh, returned. Remember that one? I um, know. And uh, you testified that there were uh, three folders, and I believe it's set forth in the uh, report um, here, not, not right here, but somewhere, uh, that three folders were copied um, from, the, from the laptop to this particular device C drive, context, desktop. Remember that? Yes. And um, uh, you would agree you didn't perform a hash value comparison of these files or what you would refer to as a digital fingerprint, right? Compared to these files to them. Yes, I'm sorry, let me slow down. You would agree that you did not perform a hash value comparison of these files or what you would refer to as a digital fingerprint, right? Once again, so the comparison to what? Each file would have its own fingerprint, its own hash. But you're, you're, you're running this comparison 
For what? Did you provide or did you do a cash value comparison to anything? I did not. Okay. The comparison to what was what's wrong. Okay. Thank you. More importantly, perhaps, Mr. Lionel, you won't have any reason to believe that information was copied from this return device before it was returned to Sergeant, right? If I understand the question, I don't know what the problem is. Why don't you have a problem with the file on an external device and copy to a user device? Why don't you have a problem with that? Thank you. Continuing on the same page, starting with the report, looking down a couple of devices here. The WD, the highlights reference to the new analyzing device, is correct? Will you testify to that? The highlight one? No. I don't have a black and white. 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 I don't Mr. Leno, are you aware that Sergeant found that device in Mr. Frame's desk drawer? That was brought to the ground stand. They found it. I don't know exactly where it was desk drawer or where it was part of the office. You don't have any reason to dispute that it was found in his desk drawer, do you? If you're telling me that, I have no reason to believe that it was not where it was. Okay. And do you know that they found it there after they accused him of stealing it? I do not know where they found it. I don't know how long it was they accused him of stealing it. You're not aware of that? That is correct. Now, looking at here and other places where you said you've analyzed various devices, now, you didn't analyze a flash drive that fell out of a binder at Mr. Frame's deposition, did you? Where that? I do not know what you're talking about, sir. Okay. Okay, I want to talk to you about something else that changed between your original report and your supplemental report. So there have been reference to there being 50 unique missing devices. You're familiar with that concept? I am, sir. In your original report, which is Exhibit 100, we turn back to it now, but we don't really have to, you indicated that there were 66 missing USB devices, right, Mr. Lano? I am aware of that. You're a bad advisor. Sixty-six devices connected and three were returned to sixty-three devices. Fair enough. So the distinction, correct me if I'm wrong, is that you're saying in your supplemental report, 50 unique devices connected since October 1st, 2013, right? Agreed? That's correct. And in your original report, you had said, you didn't use the term unique, but you just said there were 66 missing devices connected to the same computer systems dating back to October 1st, 2013. That's correct. At some point, you reconsidered your conclusion and determined there were only 50 devices with unique serial numbers, right? No, sir. The conclusion is the same. The reason for the clarification of my knowledge is exactly what we're going through here. After I submitted the report, and I reviewed the report, it demands this number, that number, how many unique devices are there. And so that's why that report, the second report, clarified that. And I can do the math for you to get from 66 to 46, if you will. No, that's okay. But 
my next question is, you didn't uh, obtain any new information that caused you to change the number in the report, right? Yes, I did. But when one of the new information that we talked about, we just talked about that there are four different connections. In my original report, Judge, the, the number 66 was total connections delivered across all the seven new devices that I, that I analyzed. That was confusing because how many actual devices are there? So I had to uh, bring that number down, which I did, to the report. Uh, so the one of the I believe it's 46. Many devices that uh, are missing. Thanks. Would you agree that uh, part of the reason that you uh, initially referred to 66 to 5 devices was because some of the same devices were plugged into numerous computers? Oh, yes, yes. Including that one terabyte, that terabyte more than four, and there are 11 other devices that were plugged in twice, or two different uh, systems, and another one that's plugged in three different systems. So that's where the number goes down to 46. You would agree with me, Mr. Wino, that if those USB flash drives are being plugged into numerous uh, uh, computers, that could be because people were sharing information in the office uh, through their flash drives, right? You know, that's really right, and that's why, that's why I initially reported the matter because if I had a flash drive in Tom Miller's computer and, and not in Mr. Keller's computer, it's the same drive, but I, I wanted to report and show that this this computer system uh, was connected to that flash drive. That's what I initially did. And I saw that was confusing, so guess what? This is unique. There's only one that was probably on both. Right, and I appreciate that explanation, sir. Um, now, I don't want to confuse anyone, not least of all myself, but of course, uh, when, I, when I ask you this, so hopefully we can get on the same page here. But would you agree with me that in your supplemental report, where you refer to only 50 unique devices, that in some sections of the report that refer to the individual computers, it still it refers to the numbers, still refer to some of these devices that overlap. Do you agree with that? You know, Your Honor, I can check to the form on that one. I have to say I am confused. But if the witness understands it, I think he's just going to answer. Well, if he does, do you understand that, sir? Where did you get the number 50 from? Okay, on the supplemental, right? On the supplemental report? Yeah, and that's what I'm referring to. Yes, 50 unique devices that include one uh, flash drive plugged into two or three different laptops. It's only kind of important. Right. See if I can draw this this example. Um, if you look at pages um, six through, look at the supplemental report, Charles Group One One. You look at you know, pages six through fourteen. There's seven sections for each of the computers. See that? The rules. And you know, under each one, for each of these systems. There is a similar sounding sentence. Okay, you with me? So, for example, if you, if you look at the frame laptop, page seven, it says all these devices eight were connected to the laptop since October 1, 2013. Yes. Page seven, the third paragraph from the frame laptop. Oh, the second, I'm sorry, okay, second, second, third paragraph. Okay, so there, there's a similar sentence that identifies the number of devices connected since October 1, 2013 for each of the computer systems. Right? Yes, sir. And if you looked at, if you extrapolated all those sentences from the different sections, would those numbers add up to 50? No. Would they add up to 66? No, I believe it was 59. Okay, but some of that concept of the device plug in multiple things would be in those numbers. That's right. Okay. That's fine. Okay, uh, I want to touch briefly again on the other 
500 gigabytes uh, a device that was, um, that's the one that was found in Mr. Uh, Frank's desk book. Um, if you look at uh, page two of your supplemental report, So this is the device that you analyzed, right? <coughs> 500 gigabytes, yes. Yeah, so if you're looking at page two, um, the second section, which is entitled Analyze Laptops and Desktops, are you with me? Oh, yeah. And first, I guess, kind of bullet point arrow, it says frame laptop. And the last sentence of that bullet point says another WG Passport 500 gigabyte contained files written prior to April 22nd, 2013, with the exception of one file, quote, the name of the file is copy of East Chicago 697 Middle Master Estimate 50 Sheet dash 11 XL 97 dash 03, which was written on January 23rd, 2014. See that? I do. Okay, just keep that in mind. We're going to come back to that momentarily, but I just wanted to um, confirm that's file you found on that device that um, was found in Mr. Frank's test for. Um, okay, so let's talk a little more about these um, so-called 50 uh, missing U unique USB devices. Um, so I know, uh, <coughs> You know, you testified that uh, USB devices can include flash drives and thumb drives and mouse and a keyboard. Remember that? I do. It could include other types of devices like an MP3 player, right? That's correct. And an MP3 player is a device that plays music, right? It does. Now, I want to look at your exact words. There's been a lot of talk about um, these devices having not been returned or are missing. That's in your report, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when you use the words not returned to sergeant, you are not suggesting that the former employees actually had these devices when they left, right? There was no suggestion whatsoever that the statement was a stance for you. The information from Sergeant was that these devices were not returned upon the employee termination of the fleet. So, in other words, would it, would it be fair to say that what you mean is that it was represented to you by Sergeant that these former employees turned certain devices in when they left, and anything that they didn't return is quote unquote not returned? You agree with that? That's what you're working with? My words do what they say, sir. I would do not agree with my words. If the devices were not returned, sir. Period. Okay. But you don't think it would be fair for someone to conclude that because these devices were not returned or found within the employee workspace, that the former employees had these devices, right? So I am not a very important minister. I would be very important. There are devices that are not returned to the private and are not found in the workspace. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, page 99 of Mr. Lionel's deposition, uh, beginning line 24, the last line, and uh, moving on to uh, page 100. Question, right? So it wouldn't be fair for someone to conclude, based on this statement, that certain devices were not returned, that a particular employee had those devices. Answer, that's correct. So I didn't make any conclusions today. You didn't make that clear. You said that you were concluding that. I said the statement stands. There were no conclusions and inferences or anything in that statement. This question is, um, Mr. Lano, you agree it's possible that some of the uh, so-called missing USB devices 
belong to someone other than the person referenced in your report, and we've just connected to their device, their computer, right? Mm -hmm. sure. You would also agree that it's possible that uh, these missing devices were thrown in the trash before these guys left Sergeant, right? So, I think it is possible that we have to make the best gas. Uh, Sergeant so provided me the rest of the devices that they indicated when we turned to them or were found in the office space. Uh, anything else other than that is, is possible, but that's not a matter of honest the fact that I don't. So it's possible that they were thrown in the trash before these people left Sergeant, right? So that's possible that the information I have is, is the fact that the information or the Sergeant of the information that these devices were returned to them upon uh, the employee's leaving or the standing out the space at some time. Mr. Lyman, you have no reason to disagree, do you, that the uh, former sergeant employees frequently share information in the course of their business by connecting devices to uh, other computers, right? I don't know that information. I, I know what was provided to me, which I think terrified that you have to use other computers, but whether or not they use it on my computer, I, I don't have any personal information on that. And so let me refer to you know, the number of devices that were connected since October 2013. Do you have any reason to think that there's anything unusual about the number of devices that were connected to these computers to you? Well, I don't know. Which one is that? Alison? That seems strange to go to page. Starting on page 14 and closing on 15, since February 3rd, I'm sorry, is that correct? Yes. Since February 3rd, 2014, there were 14 devices connected. I, I feel that was strange. It was not the same as the other ones. So your basis for concluding that that's strange is that it's different than the other ones? That's correct. You have no idea what Mr. Alderson does in the course of his work, do you? I do not. And do you, you don't know that he whether he does the exact same type of thing as these other people or not, do you? So you asked me if it was strange. That's strange to me. If there's any legitimate answer or reason for that, then we're fine. But that is strange to me. <coughs> so I know you don't have any opinions about what information is contained on these missing USB devices, correct? I think we went through um, the situation is one where we showed our, or I observed that a uh, document was opened up and then placed onto a, an external device and we identified the external device there. So I, I think my answer is in right now. After that, that um, bit of a spread, that we can confirm that. That device was connected when the uh, office document was opened up. We're going to talk about that little display, but my, my question is, you don't have uh, any, let me ask you this. Uh, you don't have any specific findings about information that may or may not be contained on this in USB devices. No, sir, I do not. The information on devices are not available for analysis. In fact, I believe you previously told me all you can do is identify them by name and serial number and indicate that they were connected to a sergeant computer, right? Yes. Let's talk a little bit about MRU lists. So, I guess we can look at one, one sample for reference purposes. Why don't we turn to attachment L. This is the any page will do point. And so, the MRU list for the frame laptop. Let me know when you're there, Mr. Lano, please. I am. Now, you would agree that an MRU list indicates when the files were last opened on the computer, correct?
That's principally what it reflects, right? I, I think this, this, no, I, I think that this MRU was when the file is open on the computer. Uh, I believe that, that if it's open up today, and I don't a week from now, both of those open on the computer would, would show up here if it was in the less than 50. Right. But with respect, okay. But with respect to each separate item, it's a reflection that that file was open at that date and time, correct? That's correct. Not the last date and time, but the first date. Now, your report says repeatedly, when these files are open, quote, when these files are open, we can find a specific example. Quote, when these files are open, the document can be printed or the file can be saved to an external USB device. Do you remember saying that in your report? I do. But you would agree with me, wouldn't you, Mr. Lino? that there are several other things that could happen when these files are open, would you not? There are. Right. Like, for example, a file could be opened and closed with no change to the file, right? That is correct. <laughs> and the file could be opened and saved to a Sargent network, right? That is correct. file could be opened and emailed to a Sargent customer, right? And you can't determine from looking at a specific item on the MRU list which of these many things ha actually happen when the file is open. Can you? It's following up on the, the possibility that a file could just be opened and closed without any changes having been made. Let's take a look actually at attachment M. I'm looking at page <coughs> 204. Let me know when you're looking, please. And we have item number two. Um, which is like three quarters of the way down the page. You see that? I do. And there's reference to a file uh, entitled Known Outstanding Bids 061709.xlsx and reflects that it had been opened on February 10th. You see that? I do. Now, considering that it's possible, the file can be opened and closed with no changes. That doesn't mean that that file was created or revised on that date, does it? Created or revised. You can't make that conclusion, right? That's, that's correct. So, for example, if 061709 is a reference to June 17, 2009, it's possible that someone just opened up that file, looked at it, closed it, right? Yes, sir. We might have better stuff in the door with the file on the other one. Right. Now, excuse me. Also, you know, that's, that's a good time to, to ask you about that. Now, you, uh, you you mentioned uh, a bunch of inf inf um, inferences that you made, and, uh, examples. Kelly walked you through a bunch of different items, but with respect to that item number two, you agree with me, right? You don't have saving bids. That's a uh, reference that hasn't been opened on a C drive. <coughs> yes, it's not one of those situations where it's in close proximity to an E drive, right? That is correct. So you wouldn't infer that there was a copying of that file there? No, that's correct. Now, an MRU list does not reflect what user was opening the files, right? It reflects what user was logged on to the Windows through the uh, Windows authentication and password. Yes, it does. It says J Moss. Well, you told me that you don't know who has user passwords, so you're suggesting that someone logged on with 
the JBoss pass username or password and had access to the system. That's all right. Somebody logged on to this on the JBoss user list. So you can't say that it was JBoss. Oh no. And you haven't done any forensic analysis to determine, to determine which individual was actually opening any of the files referenced on the MRU reports, right? Other than the username of JBoss. Beyond that, no other independent verification of it was actually JBoss, Jim Boss. I'm sorry, sir. No, I'm not an officer and an application like that. No. And the same would apply to all of the other MRU lists, right? It was certainly not. I want to direct your attention to a couple of the other MRU lists. Um, for example, let's take a look at attachment M as in, oh, N as in Nancy. Okay. Um, so I'm looking at page one and two on attachment N. And uh, if you look at the top, for example, um, item one. Says this file was opened on March 24th. You see that? I do. And um, you would agree with me that that's reflective of the date and time that someone opened that file? That is. And if I were to tell you that Mr. Simmons was no longer employed as sergeant and using that computer, would you agree that means someone other than Mr. Simmons is opening that file? That's correct. Would you agree with me, sir, that the same act, type of activity is referenced on the MRU list of Mr. Kit Cabela in attachment P and Mr. Paul Schumann in attachment R? Feel free to look. someone else is using those computer systems, correct? That's correct. And you don't know who was using those devices, do you? Mm -hmm. um, so why don't you also agree with me, you can't determine from looking at an MRU list whether any of the documents were printed, right? That mm is -hmm. um, Let's take a step back to a more basic concept, Mr. Lionel, to make sure um, we're all on the same page with respect to USB devices. You would agree with me, Mr. Lino, that USB devices are used to store information, right? Yes. And sometimes USB devices are used to transmit large files that can't be sent by way of email. Would you agree with that? Yes. You would also agree with me, wouldn't you, Mr. Lionel, that when someone plugs a USB device into their computer, files can be transferred to or from the USB device. You agree with me? Sure. Two way Two way street, right? It's also possible, would you agree with me, Mr. Lionel, that when a particular USB device is connected to a computer, it's possible that the same file already exists on the computer and the USB device. It's possible, isn't it, Mr. Lionel? It has a device connected with the same file device. The same file could pre-exist on the USB device when it's plugged into a computer, right? Mm -hmm. yes. So, now we went through all those examples about something being open on a C drive and then being open on an E drive. Remember that? No. Mm -hmm. You would agree with me, Mr. Lionel. It's possible that when that happens, 
that same file already existed on the E drive and was not copied or moved from the C drive, right? The same size of the file was already on the external drive, yes. That's possible, right? Yes. Yet, you're making an inference based on this C to E activity in the MRU list of copying activity. I um. know. <laughs> But it's equally possible, right? That, that was, there was no copying activity. It was already on that device, right? Yes, it's already possible. And I agree with my inference is because of the, first of all, the time, the seconds. And we saw some of those go from C, E, C, E, C, E within a matter of, of, of a few minutes. So which would indicate that uh, if we want uh, this other uh, situation where we're going on the F drive, we drive, you open up the document on the laptop and then open up the same document on the external and then back on the laptop, back on the external, back on the laptop, back on the external. It makes more sense to me and even with my experience and as being a user, and um, uh, that explains that the easiest way for this to happen is to only have it open with Word or, or Excel. I'm saving that, save as onto the after. So both situations could happen, but it still means the file is still on the after. In both situations. Alright, so you now I want to um, talk just about one of the examples you went through with Mr. Kelly and one that you did. Um, if you could turn to the frame MRU report, uh, which is L, attachment L. We're looking at items 27 and 28. Location. Yeah, I'm trying to figure that too. Um, 386 and uh, four of six, so the item is all the way at the bottom of uh, three of six, 28 at the top, four of six. Are you with me? Yes. Um, you see this file is, is described here in item 27, copy of BP estimate sheet dot XLS. You see that? I do. You have no clue, to use your words, of what, what copy of means to you. In reference to this file, I have no clue what copy of means. Right. Yes. That's just the name of the file, right? That's the best file. It's copy out. Why is it called copy out by I have no information? You have no clue what that means. I know copy out means, but I have no clue why it's labeled that way. Now I'd like to talk about um, just one more of these CE uh, examples. It's actually not one that uh, Mr. Kelly talked to you about today, but one that he spoke about at length yesterday when he was interrogating Mr. Frame. Um, if you could look at the frame, MRU, in reference, this is in reference to items 11, 12, and 13 on page 3 of 6. Okay. And we're gonna have to do that flip flop thing, you know, to look at the, the times. If you can bear with me then we're gonna flip uh, back and forth to attachment A and L. I don't know if I was being tabs, I don't but uh, no. Okay, I'm just so um so line L. If you focus on item 12 and item 13, here we have um, files that were open on January 23rd. They're called copy of the Chicago 697 Middle Master Estimate 50 sheet. Uh, you see that? I do. Um, I mean, maybe we can cut to the chase on this, but this was an example that. 
Mr. Keller used as a frame to try to illustrate this copying phenomenon. Would you agree with me that the, the times don't match up between attachment L and attachment A to suggest copying? Well, I do agree, sir. You agree with me? Yes, I do. Okay. You want me to explain? Um, I mean, yes, I do. I mean, do you want an explanation? I understand. It. I, I understand. I mean, if the court wants an explanation, I, I'd, be, I'd be happy to, but I'd be happy to let you. Um, but let me, let me just ask you a couple questions. So I guess let's focus then this whole you know, time differential makes it kind of confusing, but let's see if we can just illustrate the point here. Um, okay, let's turn to attachment A. And if you look at page 202 in attachment A, uh, in the top box, there's a reference to a USB 2.0 flash disk, USB device, open print, transcend, closed print, and a bunch of dates and times plugged in in the next column. The bottom three refer to January 23rd, 2014. And there are, there are three of those which reflect that this device was plugged into the frame laptop three times for a minute or two each on January 23rd. See that? I do. Okay. And you would agree with me that if you flip to attachment L and you look at item 11, 12, and 13, that Mr. Freeman got a question on yesterday that the times that those documents were opened on his laptop are not in the time frame reference in the text today. Do you agree with that, right? Why don't you let me check your first Oh, absolutely. Thank you. And you talk 11, 12, and 13. I am.
Spilano, notwithstanding the, uh, the, the correlation between the times of opening files and device attachment, you would agree with me, wouldn't you, that you can't determine from looking at the MRU report that that particular device was the one that was attached, right? You can't say that with certainty. Check to the form. I don't understand that question. Do you know what he's talking about? I know that when you have a correction, just the MRU report is not going to be able to show which device was attached, but there are other files that were. You have no opinion why uh, Mr. Frame may or may not have been uh, accessing files uh, that are referenced on the MRU report, right? I have no reason. That's correct. And you have no basis to conclude that it was for any improper purpose, right? So, I, I, I think I mentioned I have no reason to do what he was doing and looking at those files. Um, you testify with respect to the highlighted entries on the MRU. I believe that that's a reference to files having been deleted or moved, right? Yes. Now, the uh, MRU reports only have one color of highlighting, right? No. Mm -hmm. And they don't distinguish between whether files were deleted or moved, right? There was no distinction. The, the answer is the file was either deleted or moved. No distinction whatsoever. And moved means it could be located elsewhere on the computer, right? The last one could be also located on the external drive. And it could also be located on the sergeant server, right? And on the cloud. And even deleted files could be located on sergeant server, right? Yeah, they were put there and put them in the middle, yes. You have no opinion as to whether they are or they aren't, right? I don't know the sergeant server. Okay, some testimony about the computer systems of, uh, associated with Mr. Simmons. Do you remember that? Yes. And um, in the report, you indicate that the Simmons laptop was used in February 2014 and employed quote, quote, so, uh, uh, let me find it. So I just quote it. Page 10 of Exhibit 101. Okay. All right, we'll take a short recess. How long do you think your redirect's going to take? Uh, five minutes, I hope. Okay. Thanks. Thanks.